Hello sweeties, this is another open mirroring video. So I was given a bit of a challenge and someone said, can I mirror old versions of SQL Server? So I went, well, yeah, probably. So I went and had a look and I did it. So in this video, you'll see me mirroring SQL Server 2017, but it could also work with 2008. So what's the rest of the video? Okay, great. So um, I've done a couple of videos on open mirroring, so I'm not gonna go into any of the basics I do have a mirror database ready to rumble. So here it is, it's all ready to go. I've set up the SPA. Um, but on the open mirroring side, there's nothing special happening um, on the mirror database. Um, on SQL Server, I'm using a technology called change tracking, which is actually very old. So that's why we can make it work with legacy, legacy versions of SQL Server or old versions of SQL Server. And it, you know, and it should go back to, I did, did Bing this, go, did Google it with Bing, and uh, it should go back to 2008. So if you've got a really old SQL Server, you can still get that data into Fabric. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just jump into SQL Server and we'll just see the demo running. Uh, after the demo's running, then I will then go and go through the code and explain how it works. So um, I've got, uh, I'm just gonna confirm there's no change tracking. So the, the code I've written will automatically turn this on. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I've got no data, there we go. I'm just going to insert some rows into a table. All right, let's just set the values up there. Okay, great. Now let's check to see if they've been mirrored up into Fabric. So first of all, we're going to check Storage Explorer, just to see how far the files have got. So we had nothing in here. Let me just refresh. Okay, here's our DBS schema, here's our table, and then we've got a metadata file and a data file. So let's go and actually inspect those. This is quite a cool little feature of preview. So I can see the the key column, and then I can actually view the data. If you ever want to see what the data looks like, here it is. And as you see, there's a new two new columns that weren't in the original row marker, which is something you need for mirroring. And last updated is something that I've added in. So actually, I'm I'm inserting that in in the mirroring process. All right. So let's go and see if that data has appeared inside Fabric. So let's jump across to Fabric into here. Let's hit refresh. Sometimes this takes a, a minute to update. Let's. Oh, and the data has been updated, and you can see we have that timestamp. All right, so let's go and try and insert some new rows. Let's see if that gets mirrored across. So let's go back to SQL Server. We've got some new rows here. So that's being created. Now let's go over to the landing zone and see if they've been picked up. There we have. So we've got that. A new Parquet file has appeared. I can now look at the preview. I see those two new records and the timestamp which they were then done. So I can now go over into mirroring and see whether they've been updated. There we have it. So the rows, so we can see now, see there's a different timestamp and of when they were inserted on the SQL side. All right, so now we've done some inserts. Let's see if we can do another action. So what does a, oh, we can see the rows here. So let's now update them all. In fact, let's update um, where person ID is to now Paul now lives in Paris. So there's our change in data. Cool. Let's now pop along to Azure Storage Explorer and hit refresh. Let's see. And preview that. So we can see the row mark is still one because actually one does an update. It's saying the update row two, which is person ID two, and essentially it will update all the values, which is why they've all come through. But obviously you can see the change here, it's Paris. So let's see if that's now come through. Cool. And there we can see now Paul now 
lives in Paris. So we've done inserts, updates. Let's see if we can do a delete. Um, let's go back here and now let's delete. Oh, well. So we should just get three rows on the other side. Let's pop across back to Storage Explorer. Refresh again. So we see the number four. Let's preview that. Now this looks a little different. It's now row marker two rather than row marker one, and that signifies a delete. And obviously this is because this is the key field, um, person ID, you can delete row one. So let's pop across to mirror database and see whether it's updated it. Cool, it's there gone, now it's gone. All right, so what I've shown you is we have SQL Server 2017, sorry, um, mirroring up to Fabric uh, using open mirroring. All right, so now hold on and I will now go through and show you sort of how the code works and how the configuration works. So if you can drop off now, great, see you later. Um, otherwise, Hang on for a couple of seconds. Great, so let's jump into the code. The code is pretty so, uh, it's just a C sharp project. Um, and I'll obviously put the, um, the code up on GitHub um, as soon as it's finished. Um, and the main driver, so I've got some helper functions, but the main driver is this bit of logic. So it's not a very long program. So this is the configuration information, this is where it stores, and this is where we load it. Since all that is doing is loading uh, this config file where I have all the mirroring information stored in there. Then I'm pulling out some information, so which is the database we're going to connect to, uh, the connection string, and then any SQL that I execute, I actually store in the configuration file. So if you wanted to change it, tweak it, add stuff to it, remove it, whatever, it's all in there. Nothing really should be hard coded. Um, and then we enable change tracking on the database. That's what that first one is doing. Then we loop through all the tables. And if the status is null, i.e. it's the first time we've run for that table, then we go through, we enable change tracking on it. And then we basically save it back into the config to say, right, we have now enabled it. And then once we've enabled it, that means we're gonna do the initial snapshot. So essentially we're gonna pull information out. So in the config, you'll see we have the key column for that table. We have what we call other columns. So these are the other columns from the table that I want to mirror. Additional columns, I'll show you what that is, but that is that timestamp um, that I'm bringing stuff across because I think that's very useful to say, oh, that, that's come across um, at a certain time. So if you want to know what changes have happened in, in your source system since a certain date, this will do it. Um, and then we do a bit of tidying up because the first time you run, we'll delete folders locally. Um, we create a local folder structure. We write out the JSON meta metadata file uh, using the key column. Um, then we do a thing where we find, um, we pretty much, we say, oh, what's that first Parquet file? Because there's a standard naming for the Parquet files. So this just sorts that out. Uh, and then we clean up one lake. So if, I'm, if I ran this again uh, from scratch, what would happen was, would be, it would delete the table from one lake and then start uploading again. So just in case that had been re-uploaded -up, you know, before. Um, but because of the way that I'm running this with difference of statuses per table, it will actually, um, you can stop the program, run it again later, like an hour later, two days later, whenever you want to run it, and it will pick up where it last left off. So you don't need to keep doing all these snapshots. So these are some, some slight improvements. Um, then all this bit does is says, give me a dump of that data. Um, using a query from the config file. So this is like our initial snapshot. And then this uploads the JSON file up into one lake. This uploads the Parquet file into one lake. And then we get a few things like the high watermark, which is part of change tracking, which is right, uh, just an internal value that's used to say, right, um, this is 18 or 20. And then you say, well, give me all the changes since that version. And then you can just get the changes to the table. Um, and then we save it. And then, so that's our initial snapshot. And then when it's just running, um, and so we check every number of seconds to see whether there's any changes. You define the number of seconds for each table. I think by default, I set it to 15. 
we pull out all the information about the table and the high watermark that you want to get the changes for and then um, we extract the data out so if there's any changes we extract them out and then um, we save them if there aren't any changes we just carry on and we then check again in number of another number of seconds and that's it from the from the main program and then it's all driven by this configuration now i'm going to blur bits out because hey it's got um, some sensitive information in so the first bit is the database config so the connection string so this is the server i'm going to connect to and in my case i'm going to leave this in because this is local host um and i'll leave this in so this is the database i'm connecting to but then i'm just using sql authentication so you can use any authentication you can to connect to the SQL box. That's up to you. Uh, then I've got a section on tables. So um, this is the table I'm, I'm moving across. This is the schema. And if I remove this, then it will treat it as if it's starting again. And it'll re-snapshot the next time it runs. And obviously I can tweak this a number of seconds. I can say, we'll check every five seconds, or check every five minutes, whatever I want. This is a key column, so you, obviously you need this. So some of these will default, like these, you don't need them. But of course, you need to know the key column. These are the other columns we're going to mirror. And this, and then this is that extra bit of information. And then this is the code to extract um, a full dump of data. So if you want to add things to it, feel free. And all I'm doing is just replacing it with these values from here in the code. Um, then where am I going to store my local tables? This is the local working area. The name of the database we're working on this is the sql to enable change tracking and so you can just increase up to seven days 20 days whatever so you can make those changes you can configure it um, this is actually how far the high watermark has got up to just from all my testing so it's got up to 45. Um, this is a query to get the high watermark um, and this is the query to get all the incremental changes so it's pretty simple um, so it's using part of change tracking it's using this um, change table function um, and then the other bits which will be blurred um, which are our upload details so where are we uploading so that's our spn this is our secret um, this is the tenant uh, this is the landing zone so this is what you've copied from your mirror database and this is the path to az copy so i'm still cheating still using az copy it just sort of works i'm just using it a little bit smarter and that's it from code you just run it so once you configure it, you run it, and it just seems to work. Um, so feel free to leave some feedback. Um, see, and actually, I'd be interested. I haven't tried it on 2008, but I would be interested to see how it runs on 2008. But it should run without any any major changes. All right. Well, thank you for watching, and bye, and love you.